The horror games from the mid-2000s are my favorite in the genre, but one I always regretted not playing was Fear, and I have to say, it is not what I expected. So, my goal is to 100% this game and give you guys the full Fear experience, which, by the way, is a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. A fair warning, this video might not look great, and I mean that very literally. Fear was developed by Monolith Productions all the way back in 2005 for PC, and then released the following year on the Xbox 360, which is the version I'm playing now. And while it does look like a fantastic game for its age, you still might notice some frame dips, especially because I like to play on the original hardware. But I'll try to fix it where I can. Despite those few frame rate problems though, Fear absolutely blew me away. Its combat, level design, and atmosphere are way better than they have any right to be. I always had a thought in the back of my head that this game was supposed to be slower paced and creepier. Instead, it's a bit more... I'll admit, I would have preferred the horror in a game called Fear to be a bit more of a feature than a suggestion, but the game itself ended up being so much fun that it really didn't bother me. Like other shooters in this genre, the game has a bunch of weapons, but you're limited to carrying three at a time, with some of them being clearly better than others. And while the gunplay in Fear is satisfying, it can still be a struggle to aim properly, especially if you're like me and have the coordination of Potato. This can make the enemies seem much more threatening, and in this game, they very much are a threat. I had never heard about this myself, but apparently Fear's AI is kind of legendary. Throughout the game, you'll constantly hear these guys communicate to each other using callouts that affect their strategy. Sometimes they'll be defensive, and other times they will not. This is where Fear's main mechanic comes in. We have something the NPCs don't. Whatever this is. This bullet time mechanic is meant to represent your characters faster than normal reflexes, giving all the stray dogs of the world more time to hit their target. This is limited by a stamina meter, but as long as you're patient, you can basically use it forever. The resources you'll have to manage as you play, other than your ammo, are your health kits and your armor, although it's not something you have to pay too much attention to unless you're playing on the extreme difficulty, but you will have to if you are a completionist. You can hold up to 10 health kits at a time, but you'll always have way too many or absolutely none. The last bit of info you need to know before we go in is that during a campaign run, you'll be able to find these boosters that enhance your character. Red for more health, green for more stamina. And as you might have guessed, there's also an achievement tied to finding every single one. Speaking about achievements though, a bunch of Fear's notable ones involve beating the game in some way under certain conditions. And theoretically, you could get all of those in as few as two playthroughs. But you won't, because the game is broken. But I'll get to all of that soon enough. When you first load up the campaign, you're dropped right into the setup. You play as a nameless point man in a special ops task force called FEAR, which stands for First Encounter Assault Recon. Your objective is to eliminate someone named Paxton Fettel. Fettel is an unhinged maniac with psychic abilities, who is being used by a group called the Armacam Technology Corporation to control a private army of militarized clones. Yes, really. Fettel has gone rogue and is using the clones, or replicas, to take over various sites owned by Armacam, then murdering all the employees. The only way to stop the replicas is for someone to take out Fettel. Guess who that someone is? You can't send him in alone, that's crazy! I decided to play the game on Extreme first to knock out what I thought would be the hardest achievement. It was probably a terrible choice, but I was managing. Somehow. The game really hits its stride once you get to the Armacam offices. This building is where you spend most of the game and get a chance to find most of the story, which is really just implied rather than told to you. To really understand what's going on, you need to find all of the phone messages and laptops laying around in each level. Another thing for an achievement that you have to keep in mind. This is how you get an understanding of what happened before the start of the game and all of the information that really matters. It also explains why you're seeing this creepy little girl everywhere. As you're playing this fine game, she will be the main one in charge of trying to spook you. Although the scariest thing that happened to me while I was playing was this. Um. Oh, no, 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 no. Jokes aside, Alma's constant presence throughout the game does manage to set a very creepy tone, leading to a nice change of pace from all the shooting that you're going to be doing. For me to explain what's going on with Alma here, I have to not only give you a major spoiler warning, but a warning for the subject matter, which is pretty dark. So if you don't want to hear about stuff like that, you can always skip to here. Going through all the laptops at Armicam, you start to uncover the truth about something called Project Origin, a very dark plot that involves Alma, who turns out is the daughter of Harlan Waite, a scientist working for Armicam. 
After showing signs of psychic abilities at the age of seven, Oma was put into an induced coma and locked in something referred to as the vault. Then, years later, when she was still only a teenager, she was temporarily removed from the vault in an attempt to have her birth children sharing her abilities. And that leads to the birth of your target, Paxton Fettel, who would be raised by Armacan for the sole purpose of controlling the replicas, and after his birth, Alma would be forced back into her coma. Eventually, when Fettel was 10 years old, he would suffer from a psychotic break that was caused by Alma. This resulted in the death of several Armacan employees. So, they decided to pull the plug on Alma, letting her die while she was still trapped in the vault. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong because this game is pretty hard to follow, but I think Fear takes place about 20 years after Alma's death, which would have taken place when she was 26. This made the most confusing part to me why Alma would still look like a kid, for most of the game at least, but I still haven't played the sequel so it could be something explained later. It also could just be something simple like this is her mental image of herself since she was asleep most of her life. After learning all this information, your job as the point man is to follow Harlan Wade to the facility where the vault is located, which was recently reopened by Armican. Once you get there, you have to stop him from opening the vault while also needing to take down Fettel in the process. After fighting your way into the vault, you realize you didn't make it in time, and you watch as Harlan manages to free Alma. But this is where the point man gets his chance to finally stop Fettel. The last thing you're tasked with doing is destroying the facility that held the vault and then make your escape. The only thing standing in your way is a bunch of demons and Alma herself. Once you defeat Alma, it gives you the final reveal of the game that the point man is actually also her son. You will be a god among men. I actually cannot recommend Fear Enough, and that isn't nostalgia talking because this was my first experience with the game. Not only is the enemy AI better than most we see today, but thanks to its early adoption of dynamic lighting, it doesn't even feel half as old as it is. Plus, even if you don't beat it on extreme, you should still be able to get 13 easy achievements along the way of playing it. There even is more to it than just a well-executed campaign, too. Fear launched with its own multiplayer that's actually really fun and even still has some dedicated players on its own servers. Fear's multiplayer has 8 different game modes with 13 total maps. You can queue up for whatever you want, and surprisingly, the servers have stood the test of time. The game has no issues with desync and matches load pretty consistently. All of these are features some modern games don't even launch with. This does, however, bring me to an unfortunate issue with not only Fear's multiplayer, but the game as a whole. You see, if you go back and play some games from this era, you will notice a trend of achievements being just very weird. I have to imagine it was because there was no set standard for what an achievement was, so most developers had no frame of reference for what to do for them. Most of these games treated achievements more like random collectible badges rather than a list of challenges designed to be 100%ed. A good example of games like this are Quake 4 which ended up having an achievement for becoming the top ranked player in multiplayer, a feat I would not be alone in calling completely unreasonable. Luckily for us though, that didn't affect fear nearly as badly as it could have. The only standout exception is an achievement for playing 1000 games of multiplayer. W why Who thought that was okay? The default timer for most game modes is 20 minutes. That's over 300 hours of playing the multiplayer. And yeah, I know there are much worse achievements out there, trust me, but that doesn't make this any better. Still though, I'm not phased. If an achievement requires less time played than I have in Fire Emblem Awakening, I'm not afraid of it. Another thing that takes the edge off this is that the minimum lobby size in this game is 2, making this game easily done at the low low price of an extra Xbox and all of your desk space. So despite it being Fear's easily most time consuming achievement, it is not the hardest. That one is called No Fear and I'm getting to that mess. Personally, when I 100% games, I like to start with the multiplayer achievements just to get them out of the way. Fortunately though, the achievement gods blessed me with something I desperately needed for situations like this. Friends! We started off easy, going for 50 total flag captures in CTF. These only count for personal captures and not your team scores, so it took a few sessions. In the meantime, while we were doing flag capture rotations, we started getting 50 kills with each weapon in the game, including grenades, and your fists. I think he's down. 
The only thing you really have to look out for while doing this is to finish at least once with a negative score and make sure you aim for the head. The last kill total achievement you'll need is one for getting 200 explosive kills, but after getting 50 with each grenade type, you should only need about 50 more. Then we can clean up the last couple achievements by winning 5 games in each team mode and 1 in any free for all. Yeah. This was about when most of us were close to 100 games played, which only left us with MP1000 for the multiplayer. So it was time for the real grind. The fastest setup we could find for grinding this achievement out was creating a game of Team Elimination, Fear's version of Hardcore Team Deathmatch. All we had to do was select the map Evacuation and set the spawn timer as low as it can go. Next, die. Then repeat 900 times. The reason we usually chose Evacuation for this was because sometimes you'll get a lucky spawn and can just throw yourself off the roof faster than you can eat a grenade. In between the sessions of group self-sacrifice, it was finally time for me to get back into the campaign. I already had Fearsome for beating it on Extreme, meaning that for the remaining achievements, I was able to choose Easy Baby Mode. But since I'm an idiot, I decided to stack my runs into only two playthroughs. For the first one, I would be trying to beat the game without using the bullet time feature, without any upgrade boosters at all, and finally the worst one, firing less than 500 rounds. To my fellow completionists out there, do not do this. It wouldn't even be worth it if it worked, and trust me, it does not. It started off smoothly with me flying through the first three zones. I only had to use my ammo in two sections. The first where you have to kill these guys before you can continue, and later to finish the area, I needed an extra little boost to be able to take out this heavy replica. Once I made it to the army cam offices though, this is where I really started to miss those health boosters. I went from fight to fight, desperately clinging to any health pack I could find, when eventually, this happened. You've got to be kidding me. No health pack, no grenades, and too afraid to fire because I had not been counting my shots. It would seem like I was in a bit of a bind. After almost an hour of trying to figure a way out of it, I almost gave up. But that's when I remembered who I am. I'm no video game expert. I'm barely even a YouTuber. What I am is just really stubborn. Oh my God, there's another one. Oh my God, there's another one. This is glass. Charge, 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 charge. Yeah, you can put the... I knew it. Two more, two more. No! Once I finally got by this part, I ran through the game without firing too many more shots. And I eventually made my way back into the vault. Now that I was done with the replicas, all that was left were these ghosty things in Alma. These things surprisingly can be punched, but it isn't too effective. When it comes to the final fight though, you cannot touch Alma or it's game over. So with only a few more shots, we're finally done and I have three more achievements, right? No juice, that's good. Real time, that's no slow-mo. The other achievement. As you can imagine, I was a little mad. Some people say the achievement is miswritten and meant to say less than 50 shots, but I'm pretty sure that's not correct. To me, it seems like the achievement tracker is bugged and doesn't reset in between playthroughs, which means the achievement effectively became impossible the moment I fired 500 shots on my first playthrough. So realistically, this isn't too big of a problem. I can always just delete my save and try again. My only hangup was that I still hadn't played a thousand games of the multiplayer, and I had no idea if it would reset that achievement counter too. So I decided to play it safe and backline ammo hog until after I had MP1000. Meaning for now, I was free to play the campaign again, but this time I had to find every phone message, every laptop, every booster, every enemy, and do it all without dying. At first, I was really worried about this because it seemed like a lot to juggle, but it was kind of a piece of cake. I really didn't even get close to being killed by anyone other than myself. Apparently powerful psychic. Makes sense. 
<laughs> oh my god. Whoops. After five-ish hours, I was four steps closer to my goal. But Ammo Hog was still off limits until I finished the multiplayer. So I was finally left with the real hardest achievement in fear. No fear. Won every instant action map. The instant action maps are four small versions of the main locations that you'll see throughout the game. You're dropped in with almost no resources and then given 15 minutes to defeat every single enemy. Dying or running out of time counts as a complete loss and won't even submit a score to the leaderboard. There is no debate over the fact that this is Fear's most difficult achievement. This honestly might be the hardest achievement I've ever personally done. And despite knowing that, I still went in overconfident, but I learned real quick. I decided I would play through each map on easy right before doing it on hard. One of my very few talents is memorizing completely useless information very perfectly for a very short amount of time. My idea was to make a mental map of where each replica spawns and be ready to save as much time, ammo, and health as I could. I am panicking. I am panicking so hard right now. Ah. Oh, I'm half done. Is it over? Is it over? Please tell me it's over. Please? Yes! Oh my god. What? What? All right, I have to cut my audio right there or I'll get age restricted again, but I need to explain why I'm mad. The final run on the last instant action map was supposed to give me two achievements. Feared was for beating every single map on any difficulty except the lowest, but I only ever played on lowest and extreme. That means for some reason my runs counted for feared, but not no fear. At a loss, there was only one thing I could do. I did it again. After an entire day of non-stop playing instant action, I was finally given the achievement for beating each map on extreme. Once I finally got this very hard earned achievement, I was further rewarded the next day by getting MP1000 in my next multiplayer session. This left one more to go, so I deleted my save data and started the campaign one final time. 100%ing fear is definitely a huge grind, but even through its buggy achievements, I had a real blast. I can't remember the last time I had this much fun playing a first person shooter because they just usually aren't my kind of game. But if you ever get the chance to play fear, you need to take it. Just be prepared if you're going for a completionist run. No, no, no. Oh, there it is. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, I need to give a thank you to my members who've stuck around even though I'm a lazy streamer, but a special shout out to Colby Workman, Tanner Moulton, Nevermore, and Ryan MK 666 Bye.